Hi, today I'm going to walk through how you add a flight on my flight book. It's mostly straightforward, but there are some tips and tricks that I'll uh, show. And I'm going to focus mostly on the website, but I will also show uh, how this works on the uh, mobile apps as well. So to start, you add a flight by going to Add Flights under the Logbook tab or just by clicking the uh, New Flight button while you're viewing your logbook. Uh, in, starting in the upper left, date of flight is the date of the flight. Um, you can type in a date or just click, uh, and it will use your region's uh, conventions, for whether it's month, day, year, or, or day, month, year, whatever your browser is set to. Next, you select the aircraft for the flight. Now, this is super important because it's the model of aircraft that tells me so much about the flight, whether it was turbine, whether it was complex, whether it was tailwheel. What was the category class? Was it a helicopter? Was it a glider? That's all determined from the aircraft that you use. Now, e even if you're just re recording some ground training, pick an aircraft and just set the total times uh, to zero. It's um, But every flight has to have an aircraft in the system. Now, uh, the aircraft does determine the category class, but there are a few corner cases where you may need to override that. And so here where it says show alternative category class, if I click that, I can pick a different category class to use for a given flight. So you might use that, for example, if you have a plane, uh, an amphibious airplane that's mostly on water and you occasionally have a flight that's on land and you want to count that as a, a land flight. Um, but uh, Or if, if it's on floats part of the year and wheels part of the year, you might do that. Although in that case, it probably makes more sense to have two versions of the aircraft side by side. Um, the route field is pretty straightforward. Now you'll notice I don't have a from field and a to field because computers are pretty good at figuring out that the first item in the in the route of flight is the from uh, airport and the last one is the to airport. But you can just type in KSCA uh, to uh, SJC for a flight from Seattle to San Jose. Uh, you can use ICAO, which is KSEA. Those are the four letter codes. You can use IATA, which is what you use with the airlines, um, or you can use FAA codes. I've got them all in the system and uh, it's pretty good at figuring out which one is which. Now, I am a logbook, not a flight planner, so it absolutely biases in favor of airports over uh, navigational aids. So if I put in SFO, that means San Francisco International Airport. But if I put an at sign before it, that tells the system, oh, uh, I, I'm, I want you to pick up the nav aid here. So that's a way that you could type in uh, to specify that you went by way of the San Francisco VOR in this case. Um, the comments field, I'm, I'm betraying my software background here a little bit. Uh, we use comments in the software industry. I know that a lot of uh, folks use remarks. Same thing. It's just any additional information you want to provide about uh, the flight. So the times block here has the basic information that are in pretty much every logbook everywhere. How many approaches did you do? How many landings? Did you do holding uh, procedures? How much cross-country time? And so forth. But there are a couple things I want to highlight here. One is total landings. This is the total number of times that you stopped flying, whether it was a touch and go or a full stop. If you click on show details here, you can specify the number of, of landings that were full stop day and that were full stop night. And so these are subsets of the total landings. So if you did four landings, three of which were touch and goes, and one of which was full stop, you would put four here in the total landings field and put your one full stop down here. And it's still only four landings. It says th this basically is saying three of them were touch and go. Um, and the, the full stop day and full stop night is important for figuring out night currency and tailwheel currency. Um, the second thing I'll, I'll point out here are these little gray arrows. And all of the um, times that you'll see uh, on a, a flight entry form uh, have them. And what that will do is if I have a value in the total time field, then if I click on the gray arrow next to any other time field, it will cross fill from total time into that field. So if I click on PIC or cross country here, it cross fills from the total time field. 
I'll also point out that I have instructor time and second-in-command time here. Now, I don't have my CFI certificate, and I don't do the kind of flying where I would be recording SIC time. So if I want, I can go into Preferences under the Profile tab, and I can turn those off. And that's just, it simply reduces clutter. So if I go back here, now those fields are gone. And that, it, that's all it does is it reduces clutter. I can put them back at any time. Now there's a whole lot more that I might want to log on any given flight than these basic fields over here. And in fact, my flight book supports over 600 additional attributes and I keep adding them uh, over time. Again, belying my software background, I call these properties of a flight. And they're here in this list uh, and you can see that there's just a whole bunch of them. Look at them all. So the way you use this is that you would pick a, a, uh, a property that you want from the list. So I'll pick aerobatic time. How much time did I spend doing aerobatics? And you notice that it's now been added to my uh, list of properties down here. So I can go in and type in whatever value or I can cross fill because it's, it's a time field uh, from my total time uh, field. But boy, that's cumbersome to do more than once. So the nice thing is you don't have to do it more than once. My flight book will automatically show all of the properties that you've used on previous flights here on the, the new flight page. The idea is if you've recorded it before, you probably want to record it again. And if you've never recorded it, you probably don't want to record it. Uh, the other thing I'll show here is the magnifying glass. It's a quick way to find uh, uh, all of the, the uh, uh, properties that you might be interested in. So, for example, if I'm interested in what are all the different landings that I can record, I can type landings, and you see how down below now it says 58 properties have, are, have been found, and you can see now I'm only seeing the set of uh, properties that contain the word uh, landings. And you can see all the different ways you can describe landings uh, if you like. Now, even this list down here, which is made up of properties I've used on previous flights, can get a little bit uh, cluttered. For example, when you're training for a rating, you're probably doing a whole bunch of maneuvers that you never do in day-to-day -day flying after that. So if you like, you can go to Preferences again. And under Flight Properties, you'll see a list of those properties that you've used on previous flights. And all you have to do is drag and drop from the left to the right, and that will blacklist, if you will, uh, the properties and prevent them from showing up by default. So here, I've already got a whole bunch of properties that, you know, simulated engine loss on on takeoff and simulated engine loss on landings. I just don't, don't do that except when I'm training. So that's clutter for me. Uh, and so those are not uh, going to show up here by default. Uh, the times and telemetry section, if I click to show here, this has a lot more detail on uh, the times for the flight. Um, so I can put in my Hobbs time. Uh, tachometer is up here in properties. Uh, so is block time if you use block time. I can specify my engine start to engine end time and my first wheels up time, my flight begin time to my last wheels down time. And the neat thing about these times is that if you click autofill, it can use those to fill in other uh, parts of your flight based on the information that you've provided. Um, but where that gets really interesting is if you have a telemetry file such as GPX or KML or CSV uh, or NMEA or IGC, uh, see, there's a bunch of different formats, and you can get this from ForeFlight, you can get this from Bad Elf, you can get this, uh, I think, from Cloud Ahoy, you can, uh, and of course, you can, you can get it from the My Flight Book mobile apps as well. Um, but uh, let me show what happens here. Let's uh, pick my sample flight that I have, I've downloaded uh, before, and let's say that my starting Hobbs was 320.5. And so I've got a CSV file that's got a bunch of, uh, of latitude, longitude coordinates that have been uh, time stamped. Uh, and it, in this case, it has speed, but I can derive speed if, if, uh, if you don't have it. And I'm going to click autofill. And what that's going to do is that's going to read the file and fill in as much of the flight as it can from there. So what it did here was it filled in my route of flight. It figured out my, my airports that I landed at. 
it uh, is going to fill in the total number of landings. And in this case, three of them were after the, uh, the one hour after sunset uh, period. How long, how much of that flight was night flight? How much of that flight was, or how long was that flight altogether? You can see that it filled in my ending hobs based on my starting hobs. It filled in the engine time based on first sample to last sample, and it filled in the flight times based on uh, the takeoffs and landings that it detected. Now I can configure that by clicking on this little um, black uh, uh, chevron here. And I can configure things like the takeoff speed that it uses for determining takeoffs and landings, whether or not to include heliports, whether or not it should estimate night flight, uh, and even the very definition of night flight, because that actually varies around the world. So that's a really handy way to pre-fill a lot of data from your flight without having to manually uh, do it. The next section here is images and videos for the flight. I talk about that in another video, and I strongly encourage you to attach uh, images and videos to your flights. It uh, makes them much more memorable. The additional uh, item I'm going to show here is this sharing uh, checkbox. Uh, in particular, one that says share details such as route, comments, and pictures with others. And if you check that box and save the flight, then anyone who has a link to the flight, such as might happen if you email it to them or post it on Facebook or Twitter, can view a additional information about the flight. I don't show everything, but let me show what that looks like. Uh, here's an angel flight I did a couple of weeks ago. And so if, if, you were to post that on Facebook and they were to click on the link, this is what they'd see. And they'd see the date of the flight, the uh, tail number of the aircraft, your name, uh, the route of the flight, your uh, comments for the flight, your images for the flight, and even a map showing uh, your path through space if you have it, uh, geotagged images if, if there are images for the flight. Uh, the blue line here is your airport to airport route. Um, if you had not checked that public, that sharing checkbox, all they would see is a route of flight. No date, no name, no tail number, nothing that could ever tie it to you or to a particular aircraft. But I encourage you to share your flights and to check that box, but I just wanted you to see that uh, it's entirely under your control. So I'm going to switch now over to my iPhone simulator uh, and show how this works on the uh, uh, on the mobile app. So I'm using an iPhone here. It's the same for an iPad. It's the same for Android. Uh, you pick your date, you pick your uh, aircraft, you type in any comments. Uh, the route field is a little bit different. In this case, I've set my latitude and longitude uh, to be in the San Francisco area. And so I can click on this little plus button here. See, the difference between the web and these uh, your, your iPhone or Android is that your iPhone or Android probably know where they are. So if I click the plus button, it can fill in the nearest airport. And in fact, if I press and hold, it can fill in my uh, nearest latitude uh, longitude using this at notation, at latitude north or south uh, longitude west or east. And so that way you can do a point in space. Um, I can fill in landings or approaches, um, and actually one of the, the neat things about the uh, uh, ap approaches is there's a little plus button here, so I can fill in information about the approaches. So I can say I did one approach, let's say it was an ILS approach uh, to runway uh, 28 left, and it, al it already knows KSFO because that's already in the root field. And it, I'm going to say add to the total approach count here. And I'm, when I go back to the new flight page, you'll see it's added an approach and it's put un, uh, under the approach name property. It's filled in uh, information about that approach. One ILS to runway 28 left at, uh, at San Francisco. Same core field here. And Crossfill works in a similar manner, although since we have a touch screen, um, I don't need that. I can use gestures, so instead of um, the little gray arrow, I can just press and hold, and then it'll crossfill based on that. So if I press and hold, you can see how the crossfill works. Properties work in a similar manner, so if I go to Edit Flight Properties here, then the first section of properties here are my previously used ones. These are the ones that were automatically on the uh, new flight form on the web. And then they're broken out by um, 
uh, first letter. Now, of course, I can search. So if I come in here and, and search for takeoffs, it's the same uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, search box as what happened on the web. But the other thing I can do here is if I uh, uh, know that I'm using a property a lot, I can press and hold, and you see how it gets a little yellow star? Now let me do another one here. And now when I go back to the um, new flight page, now those are going to stick there. So, so I can control uh, which ones are on that new flight page. And I do that just because screen real estate's a little bit um, more uh, limited on the, uh, on the mobile apps. And otherwise, it's exactly the same uh, process. So I hope that this is uh, useful in helping you understand how to enter or edit uh, flights on my flight book. Thank you very much.